general power bi will follow the power bi guided learning um, if you want to learn power bi on your own please feel free go to this particular guided learning page of power bi just search for power bi guided learning i will also drop the link in the teams so you can visit there watch your videos learn one or two things on your own okay so it's not about the manner being the lot of this this is not about the manner this is about power bi but if you have any questions you want to ask please feel free to ask power bi actually goes way deeper than what is in the power bi guided learning what i know for sure is going through this guided learning you have the foundation in power bi you won't finish this um, power bi guided learning and not say you have an idea of power BI. you will definitely have that idea of what power bi can do and it's not left to you to explore what is inside of Power BI. So last week we talked about getting our information into Power BI, how Power BI sees our data, the area where Power BI does the, what I call the data modeling and where we run our reports. Okay, so today we'll be building on that. If you we are not part of that class, please go back to the teams, a video of last week's session or shared in the team, feel free to watch it at your leisure time. So at least catch up what we are discussing today. So today we'll be taking it a step further. And this is actually as a result of one of the discussions I had as a result of this class last week. So during the course of the week, I had a discussion with one of the students of this class and the discussion came from a specific kind of request last week we tried importing data from an excel file but in a situation where you have excel files that have similar information okay stored in one place in the situation where you have excel files let me use who can i talk who can use one can i use for instance let's talk about operations again is the way operations currently keep their TMRC on a monthly basis in different files. If you want to bring these TMRs together in one and try to make sense of them together, how do you go about this? Or, um, um, Turai, Turai, please give me an example of one document you work with that has data being recorded in it on a monthly basis. Sorry, I didn't get that. I said, give me an example of data, a particular data sheet you work with monthly that has data coming into it daily or weekly or monthly, but it is separated into months. Um, uh, I have it in days, which is the export chip analysis. Okay, have a, a, awesome. That's in a very good example. So, export chip analysis, for instance, when you go to NAV, you download your export chip analysis for a particular period, it yeah. gives you the exp say if you download export analysis for January, because uh, because NAV could take a while to load maybe the large data. You download that of January, you download that of February, and you have them stored in different files. But remember, the headers are always the same, right? Now you want to bring that information to Power BI. One way of doing that is by telling Power BI, you know what? Go here, pick this particular Excel file. Go here again pick this one, go here again, pick this particular Excel file. That is one way of doing it, and I'll show you that way, and I'll show you the second way. It is not left to us in this class to figure out which way is the best way to go. All right, let's get our data. I click on the get it data right. Okay, the get data screen comes up asking me, where do I want to get my data from? So in my case, I'll work with the first scenario, which is, let me get the data the way we did last week. Let's get each file separately. I click on Excel, being an Excel file, click on connect. Okay. And I will work, uh, my file already is on my desktop. This PC desktop. I have it in my, I'm working with live tracking data today. Now, I have two files in here and let me open them in Excel. You see what they look like. Open in Excel. So looking at this file, 
looking at this file, we will see that it has the movement status, the fleet number, last position date and time, the registration number of, this, of the truck, the location, and the GPS coordinates. This information, as you can already guess, is the information for our trucks, okay, and where they are currently. All right. So this one right now is information coming for TMP. I think, yeah, this is a TMP one. I minimize this. I open this other one. And I have the same information, but this time around, for other trucks, the flattest trucks, the box body trucks, the OVA trucks, we have them all in here. So now, how do we bring this and make it clear? This is one. So we have two of them here. So for clarity, so you notice that they have similar headers for different information for different trucks. So how do we bring this together and make sense of it? Okay, uh, uh, that is where our first discussion for today will start from. Let's start with the first data up here. Let's introduce this one and I click on open. I have those seats on my trying to bring the data into Excel, into Power BI. It's asking me what shapes in this data do I want to bring into Power BI? And I see that here. Okay. So this sheet name, the worksheet name varies based on what you have inside of your data. Okay. Inside of your Excel data. To confirm this, let's go back to Excel. Notice that this particular worksheet is named what assets the other one also what has assets as a worksheet name so in this case i'm importing just one and i'm loading this let me edit this let's do some work on it click on edit so from our discussion last week remember that this information looks clean already but as we can already this this the header column one column two column three and so on that is the current name power bi is giving our data but we don't want to use that we want to use our own headers in this case status number plus position registration and all of that how do i go about this i tell power bi you know what use the first row of this information as what okay. as my header and how do I do that? Look at the upfront right here. Use first row as header and click on that. Power BI automatically does what we call promoting of a header. It promotes that row to what to become a header. Notice what happens afterwards. We now have movement status as our header, fleet number as a header, last position as header, registration as header location and GPS coordinates. All right, so that's for that one. Um, so a very large extent, this information looks fine and we can run with it. So if I need, let's, this is called TMP, asset TMP. This is asset TMP, I can rename it here, asset TMP. Just double click on the name over to give it a new name, because right now I gave it the name asset, which is, uh, a worksheet. I need the other data coming from um, Ruby, Gladys, and all of those other points. How do I go about getting those ones inside of Power BI? I can as well go back here and tell Power BI I need a new data source. Source. Go to Excel. It's going to ask me where I want to get the data from. I tell Power BI get it here. And I do what? Open to give it the same. Yes, that's what we are trying to do right now. But in this case, we are taking the files individually. So, again, in a situation where you have 10 files, you are going to do this one after the other. Now, the consolidation has a caveat the headers of this file must be same. Again, I call it the data structure of these files must be the same, including as you write, as you can see right now, we have assets being the worksheet this file and this file. 
we have the headers being on the first row. So if you have your header in this other file being on the second row, consolidation becomes tougher. It's not impossible, but it becomes tougher. Okay, but in this case, our data is still very humble. It has everything in order. So let's just work with it until we get to the hard knocks, hard knocks to crack. So in this case, I'm introducing the second guy and I'm saying, you know what? Import. Click on OK. Notice what happens. Power BI creates a new data set here. Okay. This time around, a new set of data from a different contract. Now, this for you can be month one and month two. Okay. This for you can be customer one, customer two. Depending on how your data is being, like if you're this afternoon, we are discussing around collecting information from different places. This for you can be different units, collecting the same information from different units. Are we together? In um, so this own case, it can be different um, projects. You are collecting the same information. The same information, I'm being peculiar, the headers are the same, but you are collecting for this particular project, for this other project, for this other project. But you want to bring this all together and make sense of it as one. Now, this is one way to go. I can use the first row as header here as well, and I'll do asset, and I'll call it um, orders. Let me just call it orders. Okay? I'm done here, then I can close and apply. Close and apply here does what? It brings Power BI. That's Power BI. You know what? I'm done. Bring my data set into Power BI and let's start working. But, but, let me just show you. Now, right here. Okay. I didn't you say this, you don't say your daddy. Best thing I would like you to talk to me now. Mr. Pascal. Pascal, can you please mute your system? Pascal. I'm not Pascal. I'm not Pascal. Not Pascal. Lulu. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lulu. Can you mute your mic? Thank you, everyone. All right, so. Now, the way this works, you have two different data sets here, and it means anything you want to do, the reports for these two guys would be what different. But what we want to do today is to what consolidate. I want. I will try to go back to. I'm coming. I shouldn't have come here. So let me go back to. I'm coming from edit queries. Okay. I'm trying to consolidate this information into one. All right, and I will call I, and that is what we call merging in Power BI. It's called the word merging of queries. This time last week, when we were discussing Power BI, we mentioned that on the right here, everything you've done inside of your data on this stage, at this stage, of, at this data modeling stage, is stored here. Okay, in Power BI terms, these are called queries. Okay. So every query we have done by just clicking something, removing something, adding something, Power BI stores them here. Okay. Now I want to use, we want to match query that gives me TMP data and query that gives me others together into one. And how do we go about that? There's something called what merge queries at the top here. Okay. There's something called merge queries at the top here. Let's give that a shot and let's see what comes out of it. Clicking on match queries here. Actually, this is actually not merging. I don't need to add merging. Okay, no, I'm not discussing merging today. I'm, I'm appending. Okay, sorry. I'm just misled everyone. Merging queries in this case is not what we want to talk about. I'll discuss merging queries before the end of this session today, or maybe the next. In this case, I want to append, and I'll explain what merging does. Merging query says, the information in this particular query or in this version, this particular table, I want to get information from another table to correlate with this one or to add up to this one. So, for instance, who is the driver on this truck? I want to get that one from, say, GA. 
okay that's when i merge queries i use the truck information to get my driver information but in my case i'm not merging queries i want to what add to what i currently have so i have cmp information at the top i want to add other information underneath and that is called what append okay so sorry for misguiding everyone this is going to i'm cancelling this and i would rather what append queries so father is asking me append what two or more tables or just or three or more depending on what you want mm, let me use three or more i just in case i have more tables i want to append click here and it's going to ask you what tables do you want to append as you can see tmp has been added to this particular stage so i want to append orders to it all right so tmp is here let me remove everything so we can see let's start afresh so remove this one is not even possible let me remove this one first so i can remove whatever it is i want to remove from this other side so any table i have moved from here to this particular stage becomes the table i want to append together so clicking on ok not to work power bi does takes its time does something internally and how do i explain this now how do i show let me go back one step further one step backwards before appending we had 509 rows in this data before appending we had 509 rows and we can see that down here let me move this step again CMP has 509 rows of data in it. Okay. Others has 348 rows. You can see that down here. Okay. And I can tell Power BI append queries, but this time around, let me show you something new. Append queries as new. This time around, you to create a new table with the two queries being appended into it. So let me click on append as new. It gives me the same options. CMP orders. Let me move this again. And once I click on OK, it creates a new table with TMP and orders inside of it, giving me 867 rows. So right now, Power BI has taken the information I have in TMP, the information I have in orders, merged them together, and is giving me what? One table with everything inside of it. Okay? So I can now what close and apply. Let me give this table a name. Call it all assets. Close and apply. Close and apply. Now notice that we have all assets. We have TMP. We have orders. We have what all assets. Okay. So so this. Extent, do you have any questions before I proceed? This includes good people online. Do you have any questions at this level at this stage? Please, Manuel, can you go over the last thing you did? All right. Thank okay. you. So, what's the question? I didn't follow with the last thing you did. I was distracted. Okay, okay, okay. I'll take that one more time. So I said to append tables, and by appending, I mean adding more information to a table from all that. So you have January, you have February, you have March, you have April. That is what we call what appending. The headers remain the same. Okay, so what do I go about that? I will delete this guy one more time. All right, do I need to delete? No, let me not delete. Let me create a new one. I lost the Power BI. Append queries as new. So what am I telling Power BI? I create a new table and append these tables inside of it. Then it's asking me how many tables do I want to append? What is my first table? What is my primary table? That's what we have down here. But in this case, I'm working with three or more tables. Let me move here. The primary table, as you can see, TMP is already here. I can remove it if I want to, but well, I can bring it back, add, and I click orders. All assets right now, I don't want to add it to the list. So all I, all I do, I leave it where it is, okay? And tell Power BI, I'm done with this match TMP and orders, and I click okay. 
it creates a new query or rather a new table down here giving me everything into one okay so then i can rename this and i say sorry said, sorry manuel yeah sorry to interrupt right, i don't know if i'm the only one i'm seeing a blank screen here you're seeing a blank screen mm. i will see the two of your course i want to see a blank screen why you be disturbing the class <laughs> i know you are the only one that wants to right, so this is a place to start with people <laughs> But yet to learn. Pascal, please they confirm what you see now. Still the same. All right, I'm sh I'll share my screen one more time. You see my screen now? Not yet. It's fine now. It's okay. I can see it now. Pascal. See your face. You can see my face. Can you see my screen? Please confirm that you can see my screen. I can see your picture now. My picture or my screen? Emmanuel, don't mind this guy. Know. Let's continue. If it's your <laughs> screen that I'm seeing, but I know it's your picture I'm seeing with a flower beside you. <laughs> can you imagine? Where did you see flower? <laughs> <laughs> Name of noise makers. Uh, but I think without taking names of noise makers. <laughs> Anyways, back to yeah, your question, please. Yeah? Uh, okay, sorry, I won't share this one. So let's let's yeah, let's let's learn something. I won't I'll share the file. I'll definitely share the file. Okay, I'll share the file so we all can work together. Now, as you can see, we created a new all assets query or a new asset table and we name it after Turayo who asked the question. But in this case, I don't need to load that. So I'll remove this one. Okay. I'll delete that. Then I go back to where we were before, close and apply. Um, we are back here. Okay. So as we discussed last week again, you can make sense of this data whichever way you want to. Let's even look at what the data looks like. Someone has left me some wonderful message. Personal chat. So I won't be able to read my personal chat within the class. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I'll send me a message in the class. Anyway, so. Uh, so I retake that again. I assume that wasn't for me. Okay, so, so, so. Let's see what our data level looks like. I go here to, to see what my data looks like. Okay, so I have all assets, I have T numbers, I have the registration numbers, I have their locations, multiple all of them have locations. I can see a lot of work code there. I can see their GPS coordinates and so on and so forth. Okay, now let's do a quick, let's get a quick report based on this. I'll show you one problem we're trying to fix here today. Then we'll now go back to the initial, uh, what do you call it? The initial problem we're trying to solve. Try to get data from a folder. So to work with this, just like every other thing, I can drag my fleet number in here. And thanks to Power BI, it shows me a list of all my T numbers. I think by you know what? I don't want to, don't give me a list of all my T numbers. Just count all of them. Count, click here to count all your T numbers. But sometimes your T numbers can appear more than once. Count what? Dixit to count your T numbers once. So clicking on count Dixit gives me a unique count of every one of my T numbers in that list. Okay, in case you don't understand what we did here, I can explain further, but it was explained in details last week. So you can watch the video to follow up. Uh, or to, write, to catch up. I can click on the card here to change what this will look like. So instead of having that that table of command, I can click on the card to show this number in this beautiful card. Okay, last week we talked about how what the building blocks of Power BI, what the building blocks are, and I will advise you to please go and watch that video to understand what the building blocks of Power BI is, and then see how what we are working on today. 
Okay, so right now we can see that our data is just fine. I can count the two numbers inside of it. So that is the first stage. We are able to get our data one file at a time, one file at a time. Now let's go back to our data source and try getting data that have similar properties with, I'll call it one click. Now this time around, I want to get data from what I would call what? A folder. See it up here, get data, and I'll go to more options. Get data, go to more options. And we'll notice right here that we have the folder option. Oh, this guy has to do this again. Okay. Please give me a minute. I need to get back up. No, no, he's sharing it. Yeah, I'm trying to stop sharing for now. Then I'll share. I want to, my projector is connected. I need to play back up. So that we done in a minute, please. Just a second, longer than I expect. I'm on hold. Please, sorry for the delay. Everyone just join the team online so and just continue the discussion. See, yeah, if they just join, we will just be quiet. If this happens, if this happens one more time, we will just do that. Okay, I'll see if we can join the app since we already have. Since that doesn't have any. Well, please, everyone, please, if you have a team on your system, kindly join. Kindly join the team online. Please, let's have this conversation online. So, this is. Join what, please? Not you, not for people online already. My I'm system is a projector. So, Humble, Bingo, kindly join the team online while I try to get this working. Let me know when you are there. If that is fine, I will continue. There is no snacks in there. How can you do well? Huh? I feel well noted. I wouldn't mind if you provided some for us. 
At least there's, there's, no there's no snack in the class. Who said so? They have snacks. Who said so? They have food spiritual food. Not eat pineapple. Pineapple food is perish. So someone should please provide a clue with some snacks. So. Hmm? Let me look for, let me look for you right here, right? <laughs> Just let me know where you are. Oh, please, 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 please. Thank you, Inkim. Thanks for sharing that with him. Please, I can look. Have some coffee. I'm waiting for I'm waiting. it. <laughs> Send it to you right there. <laughs> Have some coffee, please. I know they drink coffee. You don't, uh, Mr. Uh, Pascal, who asked you a question? Mr. Pascal, you want some coffee? Too? <laughs> Motu. <laughs> Motu, be careful. So, I think we'll be gracious enough. We share some cake with you and some coffee. I think that should be fine. I think I, I think it's it's better to send it down before before time so we can now share in the, in the enjoyment. Fantastic. Um, please, are you are you good? Sorry, this is taking longer than I expect, so I will have to do without the. Uh, okay, so. All right, so for those online, let's let's continue while we try to join the class. You see, you have any problems. Yeah. So yeah, well, welcome on board. Uh, yeah. Not a problem. All right. So, sadly, I'm not able to connect to my projector. I have to move on. I have to move on. I have to move on. We have a video on. I'm sorry, the video will show my. In my video, in my recorded video. All right, so can you see my screen? I want to see my screen. Let me know. Everyone online, everyone's online now, I guess. Yeah. Yes, don't do that now. Come on. <laughs> don't do that, please. Don't, please, don't, not today. Not today. <laughs> Interesting. All right, so can you, can you see my screen, everyone? So, Ryan, you guys see my screen? Pascal, can you see my screen? I can see your screen. No, I can't. I can see your screen. I can see your screen, but it's blood. I think, I I think that's the network from here, Pascal. I'm using my data. OK, I can see it now. Network. OK, it's clear from my own end. It has gone off again. It's a blank screen. It should be fine just now. No, it's not. Okay. We're good, right? Nope. No, we're not. Okay, it's fine. It's fine now. All right. All right. Please be patient. All right. Let's get the business with See what is left to be said. Now, huh? My spirit has been 
we are talking about trying to get a similar set of data from that instead of having is that can you put your mic on? Someone's mic is on. Thank you. So all I'm going to do right now is I want to try to import if data from a folder that has um, similar information from different places. OK, now I'll click on the folder option and I click connect. Now this is going to connect to my folder on my system. OK, the browse option says, you know what, go into Windows and look for where this file is. I think it's currently on my desktop. All right, the folder is on my desktop, live tracking. Selecting live tracking, clicking on OK. It stores that information here. And once I click OK, it opens up a screen telling me that this is what you have inside of your live tracking folder. What do you want to do about it? Well, this is not where I want to do any stuff. I want to edit first, and I'll explain to you why. In the edit mode, do you notice that the file name, the names here, tally with my file names here in the folder? Do you notice that? This is telling you that Power BI has read the folder and has gotten the data, the Excel files inside of it. Now, it has not read the information in the Excel file just yet, but it has just gotten the data, the Excel files, their names, and so on. When it was created, uh, and so on and so forth, other attributes. Now, we're interested in the information inside of these Excel files. How do we get that out? This content field here, this content column says, if I click here, for if I click here, I'm telling Power BI, oh, first, let me, before I do that, if I click on this binary here, for instance, I'm telling Power BI, open this file only. Let's try that. Clicking on binary here, it opens up the Excel file. And notice the step here. It says that imported the Excel file. It's telling me there is an asset, there is a data table inside of it, and so on and so forth. Clicking on the table, it opens up this. And if you remember what this stage is, it's just something similar to what we had here in the previous um, data source. OK, let me go back to my live tracking. This is not what I want to achieve. So I remove this, and I remove this, and I remove that. I want to bring these two files in at the same time. So how do I get to achieve this? Clicking on these combined files here, telling Power BI, that is this, up, this double arrow pointing downwards, and telling Power BI, take this file, make sense of it, and then give me the information from it. Click on this. It's doing its own bit, blah, blah, blah. It's trying to combine the files. It's going to ask you, OK, fine. You want me to combine the files. Which file can I use as a format for all of the files? Because probably is trying to read individual files and say, in this file, in this TMP file, this is the information I want from it. In this file, this is information I want from it. In this other file, this is information I want from it. I'm telling Power BI, pick the asset worksheet in every one of these files. Pick the asset worksheet in every one of these files. So if there are 10 files in there, Power BI will look for the asset worksheet and open them and combine them. OK? And it's working based on which file? The first file. So if I tell Power BI, use a particular one, say, for instance, I have a, an example or a template file which I want Power BI to read. I can change that here. But in my case, I want to work with what? The first file. OK? And I click on assets. OK, sometimes Power BI may see other files that don't tally with your current data setup. And you can tell Power BI, you know what? If you notice any error, you know what? Skip it. OK? Click here to skip any error Power BI notices along the way while trying to combine the file. And I click on OK. It's going to do its own bits, blah, blah, blah. All right. 
we noticed some new set of queries were created up here. I didn't know this Power BI did that by itself. I asked Power BI to do this. It went ahead, combined the files, and it has dropped everything inside one place. And how do I know? Look down here, see how many rows we have. You will notice that it is the different rows we have, just as we have in what? Our all assets. And I'll explain to you why we have the variation. Here we have 867. And in this current file, we have 869. And this is why. Okay, before I even explain why. Notice at the top here, we have our source. We have a new column introduced into our data. Fabia is telling me that I have sources, different sources. And let me check what they are. The live tracking of BP and the live tracking of mix. So I can tell Fabi, I thank you very much for this. And I want to model my information to give me what I want. I don't need this source. Right click on this, remove. We discussed that last week. When we don't have, when we don't need something in our data, we can just tell Power BI, you know what? Take this away, keep this particular one, change this one to this particular format, and so on and so forth. And this brings us back to what we had earlier, something like this. Remember, we have the first row giving us movement status. Tell Power BI, you know what? Use the first row as header, and it promotes that first header and gives me information. Okay. Now, I said I was going to explain to you why we had eight, six, we have more rows here than what we have in our all assets. The reason why we have more rows is because when Power BI combined these two files, it considered the header as a row. So within this information, okay, we have this same header which we promoted as the same thing. Let me go back. We have the same movement status as a row. I want to tell Power BI, you know what? I don't need this guy. This guy is not relevant in my data. I'll tell Power BI, you know what? Remove movement status. Any row that has movement status in it, take it away by filtering it out. And Power BI gives me A67 rows, just as we have in our original, the previous data set. Now, notice that all we did was to select one folder, click on combine, and it gave us this. Then we cleaned it up. As against selecting asset TMP, clean it up, asset orders, clean it up, then start doing appending of queries. Now, there is no right or wrong way of attempting this solution, but it is up to you to say, this is the way I want to do it. There is no right or wrong way, but there is obviously a faster way of doing it. And faster this time around doesn't mean um, it's going to cost you. It means it's going to save you time. Just like you know in your Excel, if you know how to use some shortcuts, it saves you time from doing some things. The same thing, same principle is applicable here. If you know a faster way of doing something, there is no need going the long road. So it's up to you to decide which way you want to get your data in. Do you want to import the data sheet by sheet or worksheet by worksheet and then append all of them? Or do you want to combine all of them with one click? That is completely up to you. All right. I am done here and I will say all assets this time around and I will call it combined. Let's, let, let's separate it because you can't have two tables having the same name. It's a principle in, in table management. You can have two tables having the same name. Now, if you remember when we loaded our data earlier, we had asset TMP, asset orders. Let me explain. Let me close and apply first. So you see what I'm talking about. Now, Paria is loading a new data table and it has loaded all assets combined on the right here. Okay? It has loaded all assets on the right here. I mean, notice the information in them are almost the same or rather they are the same but right now we have asset orders asset tmp all assets all of this do you want to work with this in this place the honest answer is no okay when you start working with large data sets this principle i'm about to talk about right now becomes very necessary 
what you don't need in your report, don't load it. OK, what you don't need to do your report, don't load it. And I will show you how to do it. I'm not asking you to delete what you don't want, but I'm asking you not to load it to this view. Last week, we talked about how Power BI sees and manages and utilizes your data. First of all, it has a module or a, a place where we call the data module, where you go to get your data. It, that is what we have here. OK, it gets the data. It just reads your data the way it is. OK, then it goes to the second module or the second stage, which is your data modeling view, which is what we currently do here, where we talk about combining, removing of columns which we don't need, um, changing things which, we want, which are not in the way we want them to be. All of that is done within here. We call it the data modeling view. All right. And when we are done, we close and we apply and it brings it towards our report view. Right here, anything you load here, you can use to do any report. What you don't load here, you don't use it to do any report. Now, if you're working with a large data set and you have 200,000 rows loading from all assets, another 200,000 rows loading here, another 500,000 rows loading here, another 500,000 rows loading here, you are telling Power BI to load this, these tables individually. It's going to take some time to load these tables. Sometimes the speed may not be really visible to you, but when you start working with larger data sets, then you will start noticing the speed becomes very, very important. So what we don't need, we don't load it. In this case, I don't need the all as this asset. I don't need this one. So I go back to my edit queries up here. OK. Asset CMP, as you just identified, we don't need it. So I right click on asset CMP and I tell Power BI, you know what? This currently is ticked, in which means enable it to load. I'm telling Power BI, you know what? Don't load it. So I disable it. It's telling me, yeah, do you know that you have loaded this before? Anything you have loaded before and you have created a report based on it, it will be broken. It won't, be, it won't show you that report any longer. The report becomes invalid, shattering up so many errors. I completely understand your concern. Please remove this particular table. I go to others as well. Enable load and disable it. And if I close and apply now, notice what happens. Power BI removes asset CMP and asset orders. OK, remember when we did this report earlier, this particular um, count of fleet numbers, we worked with all assets. OK, see what happens when I remove all assets. I go back to my edit queries. And I right click on all assets. And I disable loading. It's going to warn me again. I'll say, Fabi, I completely understand your concern. Thank you very much for being so caring. And I click continue. Close and apply and see what happens. Yeah, this is what Fabi was trying to warn us against. You have, you probably have used this table to create a report somewhere. So this is why your data modeling view, you always need to be careful what you do there. If you delete something that is used in your report, and imagine you create a very fanciful, one nice report, very beautiful, is driving business action day, day in, day out, and you mess up with something in your query, in your data modeling view, it messes up your report. So please be careful what you do in your data modeling view. It doesn't happen to everybody, but sometimes it may happen that you delete what you need in your report. All right, that being said, the Power BI fix is going to delete this chart because it doesn't have any source any longer. So up to this extent, um, let me ask. Let me ask everyone, which one to you would you rather use in getting your data? Imagine you have 10 data sets and you want to uh, get your information. Which one would you rather use? That would be a question within the uh, team. I want everyone to weigh in on it. Please feel free to weigh in on it. Which one would you use?
All right, let's, uh, give me a sec. Let me try to get this question so everyone can have their forms. Please feel free to weigh in on that while um, so I'll pause. I'll pause the meeting quickly so we can all weigh in on our different options. I'll push my share my screen. Please feel free. You can even ask a question at this point. Feel free to weigh in on that. Which would you rather use? Get data individually or get data from Is everyone, anyone online? Yes. I'm on yeah, I see. So I'm still expecting your responses. So which one would you rather, or should you rather talk about it? So to write for you, which would you rather work with? Can I get your, I need your, I need some response. Right, which would you rather work with if you are to choose getting it individually or getting it from a folder? Individually. Individually, okay. That's, that's good. Uh, Akilolu? Individually. Copycat. The reason being that I still don't okay. get it. You still don't get yeah. Like I, I'm trying something similar here, but it's not giving me the kind of. Um, it's not giving me what I was expecting, sort of. Okay, it's not giving what you're expecting. You know what we're going to do? Maybe after this session, please share that with me, and let's deal with this um, together. Then we can then decide which one is the way to go. And also, I think I will share some data sets with everyone and let's see which one drives action. Which one would you rather use to get your data? So to look from your yeah. experience, which would you rather work with? Um, I'd rather work with um, inserting a folder. Actually. I'd rather work with inserting a folder. Okay. Yes. Now please notice that every view shared here is personal opinion. It doesn't it doesn't affect every other one. It doesn't mean that is, is the way to go. You are also like, you are responsible for your opinion. Just choose. If it, I don't know, from I don't know when you joined, but from when you joined and what we've discussed so far, which would you rather use to get um, data? Getting data from a folder or getting data individually? Imagine you had 20 data sets to get it. Yes, 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 Concern has been noted, but any questions to this stage from anyone? Any question up to this stage? I assume no questions. All right, so back to Power BI. Now let's try to make sense of the data which we have inside of Power BI. Um, feel free to always ask your questions even after the class. Um, that's why we have this team you can drop your question here whether you are even in class now even outside outside of the class drop questions freely chat me up in privately whichever one you want whichever you are comfortable with 
new knowledge you get, please feel free to share and let's all learn together. That is why we have the teams. Okay. Now, as we said before, we have um, all our team numbers, stationary, and all that stuff. Let's see how many trucks we have stationary. Um, so let's bring movement status into my report view. Notice what happens, Fabia checks what kind of data I have inside of that space and creates a table by default. I can always change that. I can drag in my fleet no number. I'm dragging my fleet number in here. See what Power BI does is assuming I want to create a table. Now it's telling me status moving. We have the table bus. We have T this, we have T that, we have the other T's. But this time around, I want to count how many trucks we have moving, how many trucks we have stationary, and so on and so forth. So I click on my fleet number here, this drop down here, and I say Power BI count the extent. And notice what happens. It summarizes the information and says how many trucks we have moving, 86. Well, old information according to the data here means information that has not been updated. Stationary means we have 545 trucks stationary, and which means they are not moving. So it's up to you to now make info, make a decision for your business based on this. All right. Um, we can change this to become a chart to compare side by side what these, these individual statuses mean. If I turn this around by clicking on that up there, it gives me how many trucks I have stationary, how many trucks I have moving, how many trucks under old information. For instance, for those even in the um, journey management or journey control um, side of this business, seeing you have 75 trucks with old information, it's only right to start assuming that ah, some of these trucks probably are not in a reach where they are going to send information back to base. Do you want to follow up with these trucks? Are they fine? Is the driver fine? Is it? And so on and so forth. Do you want to start a lost man procedure for a driver that is not reachable and so on and so forth? This, uh, this information you can derive by just looking at this. Now let's even make this our chart a bit more interesting, more fancy. We'll try to make a quick report from what we have here. Now, 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 let me look at this. To make this chart, to turn this chart around, look here, we have the format option where we have the paintbrush. Every tile you create inside of Power BI, by tiles I mean, as I said last week, a tile is a building block in Power BI. Inside of a tile you have information. So for instance, I can get another tile that gives me my fleet number and its current, this last position. All right, let me go in that time. This last position. Okay, the location. So this right here, this table right here is another tile. It's carrying a difference, it's carrying another information. Okay, this one up here is carrying chart showing me information as well. So I want to format this chart to give me information the way I want it to look. For those who are in the Excel class, we are talking about changing colors and all of that stuff, adding more information, adding data labels. How do we do that inside of Power BI? We have the format option up here. You click on the format and it gives you varying options based on this tab. If I select the table, the options change. For instance, in a chart, I won't have column headers and all of that. But once I go to a table, I now have column headers, total rows, values, and all of that. So let's go back to the chart. I click on format. So let's start with the data label. I turn this on and see what happens. The data labels that were not there before start coming up. 545, 86, and 75. If I turn it off, they leave. Okay, turn it back on. Okay, data color here means I want to change this chart color to give me, that's the different bars, 
let me see what color can trigger action. For instance, if I turn this, I want to make this old information red to trigger information and say, you know what, these guys action it. How do I do that? I come here, if I click on this default color, I change color for everything. Everything. But that is not what I want to achieve. I want to change color for just one. So I go here, show all. It opens the different options we have there. And all the information I turn into red. Are we together? Are we together, my people? You know it's you know it's an online class right now, so I think I will need some feedback at some yes. point. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, now the guys moving. Um I probably leave them as green. Stationary. I want to change that color, say for instance, to um okay, yeah, stationary, like that. They have 545 yeah. strokes moving and we have 75 with old information okay now beauty of power bi is once you have data within once you have data it tries to make sense of it and improve interaction what do i mean for instance i have 540 let me work with old information i have 75 truck with old information i'm wondering why do i have them what are these trucks? Which trucks are they Clicking on this chart, notice what happens. Power BI filters the one below. Okay, it grays out these other ones. I don't know if you notice that this is slightly faded. Okay, it grays out the other ones and gives me the trucks that have old information. If I click on this 86, notice what happens. It changes the information here and says, oh, these are the trucks moving. So if I need to do real-time tracking, for instance, if I want to give information about trucks, that are currently moving, I can do this, okay? And if I want to give the 545 trucks that are currently stationary, I can do that, all right? Um, during the course of the week, someone asked a question, how then do I introduce filters when I need to? Let me, talk, let me show you how to introduce a filter into your report. And that is called, it's also a tile, look at the filter here, a slicer. For those who are in the Excel class, remember what our slicer was going to do for us. Clicking on slicer here, it brings out this empty tablet. Then I say, I want to filter by, mm, let's even say the movement status. Let's bring the movement status again. I want to filter by the movement status. I drag that in here. It gives me a filter, which means if I click on moving, it gives me only moving. If I click on all the information, it gives me all the information only. If I click on stationary, it gives me stationary only. Okay, um, I can change this the way I want it to be. I can change its color. I can turn this to become a drop down. Right now, it's showing me uh, the, the option buttons. I can change it to become a drop down, depending on how I want my report to look like. Okay, now that is for that one. I can add colors when necessary. Please, when you're doing your report, try to watch the colors you use for some. Don't turn your report to a color blocking field. Try to use colors that rhyme to help a lot. So you're not confusing your users. You're not confusing people who are using your report or not even confusing yourself. You might be feeling too good with your colors, but please also consider people who might consume the report. Okay, uh, I'm trying to look for a color that would fit in here. In case, please give me a color. You have been with the color before. They came online. Yes, I'm online. Please give me a color. For the background. Yes. Maybe it's yep. white. White. Uh -huh. mm. Okay, fine. Why she said. Then if I want to put a border around the for instance, can turn on the border here. So you are giving various options gives me border around this. You are giving various options to format this particular chart. Okay, so for uh, any questions at this point, because um, I want to take us to another level of um, data modeling. So I want to understand that 
at least we are able to get our data into Power BI, combine it, and then create a report out of it. Any questions at this point? Anybody? Any questions? Any questions? No question, no question, no question, no question. Ask a question, please. We unmute your mic. If there is none, let's move on. Now, I want to show something. And this is a question I got during the course of the week. And I want to use that as a practical class today. Now, notice something. This last position is actually a big time, and it also has text inside of it. Okay, I will show you last position, date, time, and all of that inside of it. If I try to use this as a for my report to take, not show what my result looks like on a daily basis. See what happens. Let me count my fifth number on a daily basis. If I drop this here and I count, what will happen? Um, I think this is. Uh, this, is, this is first of February at this time. One chop. First of February at this time. Another chop. Whereas I want to see everything for first of February. How do I? Right now, probably you see this my date, time, and text column. You see it as a text column. How do I know this? It's not magic. Let's go back to my query mode. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mic. Thank you. How do I know this? This is all assets combined. Um, remember when we promoted our headers? I come here. Notice what I see here. You remember what we discussed last week? ABC shows me that. This is a text column. I don't have any numbers here. If I had a number column here, it would tell me that this is what. Everything here is showing me ABC, ABC, ABC. There are other types. If I click here, it shows me other types. Decimal, the fixed decimal, whole number, the date, the time column, and so on and so forth. Right now, it is seeing this, my last position column, as text. And I want to change that to become a date. Okay, I want Fabi to understand it as a date so that I can train my report on a daily basis and see, oh, for the first, I have this number of trucks. For the second, I have this number of trucks. For the third, I have this number of trucks. Okay, so how do we go about that? I will introduce you to, okay. First and foremost, let me separate the date time from this guy that is putting them in trouble, which is the text. The W80 here is telling me that it is West African. Is it West African? Yeah, I think West African time. W80 time, yeah. West African time. I'm trying to be sure. Mm, how do I know? Don't worry. W80. Yes, West African time. Yeah, at least I'm somewhat intelligent. Thank God. Anyways, um, so I want to separate the date time from the text. How do I do this? If you remember, if for those advanced users in Excel or for those oh, intermediate or advanced users in Excel, you remember something called delimiters, split column, and the rest. How do we achieve that in Power BI? I can click on transform here. Power BI gives me various options for my text column. I can split my text column by delimiters. I can change it to uppercase, lowercase, all of that stuff. I can extract, say, the first of this. It's completely up to you the way you want to go about this. And as I said before, there's no right or wrong way of doing it, just maybe sometimes. Just messaging me. Okay, if you want me to attend to your message, can you send it to the team? For it to be attended to, I will be able to attend to private messages in class. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Can you hear me? Because I'm here, I'm seeing some poor network 
notification for me. Can you hear me? Mm, yes. All right. And you can see my screen. I can see your screen. I can see your screen. All right. So, all right. Thank you very much. Now let's try and split the date and time from the text. So I'll use the split column. I can use the extract. It's up to you. We want to go about it. I want to use the split. And I want to split it by what is common in this. It's saying, let's look at this. After the date, we have time. And notice that there is a space and a bracket before the WAT. Okay? In situations where you have spaces, let me I want to split by delimiters. Fabio is going to ask me, what do you want to use as a delimiter? What do you want to separate this by? And I'm going to tell Fabio, separate it by mm, space. So wherever he sees the first space, it removes every other thing. You can get other options here. It's up to you to choose. But you can add your own here. If you want to delimit by even a character, say you want to delimit by the bracket, let's even Let's delimit by the WAT and let's see what happens. Delimiting by the WAT, see what happens. Click OK. Do you notice what happens? Everything before WAT stays in one column. I don't even notice that. Everything after the WAT goes to the next column. Make sense? I remove this. I don't want to use WAT. OK, so I remove this. I remove this guy. I go back to where I was before. That is the control Z in Power BI. Just in case you're looking for control Z, there's no control Z in Power BI query mode just yet. So when you want to do that, just remove the steps in the query mode and it goes back to what it was before. Um, split by delimiter. This time around, I want to use space to delimit this. And I type, hit the space bar. All right, let me just choose space from here. I'm doing that. I click OK and see what Power BI does. It takes, uh -huh. thank you very much. It takes my date, it takes the time, and it takes what the last position is, separates them into three different columns. And do you know why this is happening? Because, let's go back to the data again. After the date, we have a space. After the time, we have a space. Okay, so um, I think to a large extent, I am fine with this. Now, Power BI has intelligently understood that, oh, this second data you have in here is a time. Notice what it changed it to, the clock. It's telling you that this is what? A time column. Whereas this guy is still in text, ABC. I want to tell Power BI, you know what? Please, this is not a text. Be smart enough to know that this is not a text. This is what? A date. How do I do that? I tell Power BI, transform this column. This is still on the transform tab. Okay. Sorry. Transform this column to what? A date. That is right here. Okay. Uh, okay, now. That's not it. I'll do that here first. This is when I want to do a date operation. I'll do that here. Transform this to what? A date. We may run into a problem. Remember when you create when you anything you do inside of Power BI query mode, a new step is added to the right here. Power BI is asking you, you just did a change type step. Do you want to add it to this step or do you want to replace the current step? I'll tell Power BI just replace the current step. If I ask you to add a new step, just add it underneath here. But in my case, I want to replace, so I'm fine. Now, thank you very much. Okay. Please, class, I want you to weigh in on this. Probably has changed some of the dates to the dates, or rather, it has recognized some of them as dates, and it's showing up errors for the others, and it's giving me this error. What do you think is causing this? Please, I, want, I would like opinions, please. What do you think is causing this? It has changed some of them to dates. And it has left some of them in error and it's giving you this error. We couldn't pass the input as a date value. What do you think is causing this? Any ideas? Any idea? Sorry, there's no right or wrong answer here, so feel free to express. 
any that ideas? The settings on the system, the date settings on the system is different from what is on the data. Okay, that's a good one. That's a very good one. You are close, but not there yet. That's a very good one. Mm -hmm. So someone else, please can someone build on that or help me with what you think could be causing this. All right, let me not waste our time, okay? Uh, okay, I'll just help you with that. Power BI is understanding the date by what I'll call its own standard. Let me go back to how I know that. If I go back a step further, I've not removed this step, I'll go back a step further, just click up here. 2102-2019 in a standard Nigeria, in Nigeria, let me not say standard Nigeria, is a way of writing Date. Well, if you look at my system screen down here, because my system is configured to report date, I think in I think that's a US date format, they put the month before the day. That is our problem here. Power BI is understanding, for instance, this is 7 8 2018. It's saying that this 7 is July 8, 2018. Whereas there is no 21st month of the year. That is why it is giving me this error. So, well, this shouldn't bother you too much. There is a way around it. So let's see how. First and foremost, I will remove, let me try remove this. No, let me convert this guy back to a text. Let me convert it back to a text again. So I just go back, click on it, take it back to a text because you cannot work on an error in Power BI. Error means I don't know what this guy is about. I'm not going to do anything with it. So I'm going to take this guy back to a text. Yes, I know you want to replace, replace it. So it gives me back what I have before. Now step Power BI, please read this date in this format. Okay, how do I do that? I can right click on this date. I'll tell Power BI change type but this time using a particular locale a particular region so don't understand it in the way the united states understand it understand it the way nigerians understand this date or where west africans understand this date if i click on using locale it's going to show up an option to me asking me okay now tell me how you want me to understand the data first i want you to understand the data not as text, but now as what? Dates. Now, which locale? There are so many. Okay? There are so many. Just keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. There are a lot of them. In our own case, thank God, we have Nigeria there. Okay? So we have, if you go scroll down to English, you see Nigeria there. So there is English of the United States, there is English of the UK, and so on and so forth. But now we are going to work with English of Nigeria. The last time I checked, English of Nigeria is vernacular, but let's put that aside. He's trying to understand it the Nigerian way. Now, notice it's telling you, okay, if you want me to understand this date in this format, it means you have to give me the data in this format. Put the day before the month, before the year. Okay? I say yes. Now, if Power BI goes ahead to understand, read your data in this format, and choose an error. Please note that every other error comes from you. Why do I say so? Sometimes we have irregularities in writing our dates, sometimes even in Excel. And I want us to use this as an avenue to start, to start correcting that. Sometimes we put our month before the day in Excel. Well, thank God, sometimes Excel corrects that for us. And in another period, do not put the day before the month. Please notice, note that when you are bringing it into a system like Power BI, they need to follow a particular format. Because Power BI is going to read it one way. As you say, garbage in, garbage out. Okay? So, read this date in this format. Clicking on OK. Power BI, OK, OK, OK. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It has not seen it as a date. Notice it changed this icon up here to what? Calendar which says, this is a date column, this is a time column, this is a text column. Now, as we've said before, I really don't need some stuff, so I can remove this guy. Remove column. And it's gone. So this automatically gives me a date, this gives me a time, this gives me all that information. I'll come back to GPS coordinates. 
for or do I need to come back? No, I don't have to come back. Let's do it once and for all. GPS coordinates, as you know, is a or not as you know, what are GPS coordinates? Let's let's help our understanding. GPS coordinates. So what are GPS coordinates? Well, there's no explanation here. Well, a GPS coordinate shows you your location on the map and it comes with your longitude and your latitude, your latitude and your longitude rather. So this information right here, okay, is a particular location on a map. This, this is longitude 7.332, latitude 3 point this. If you even copy this information, for instance, and you check it on your map, I hope this guy reads it. Let's see coordinates. Ah, let me go to the map. You're meant to open up maps. Are you open? Yeah, thank you very much for that. I just opened up maps. I thought it would be smart enough. Don't mind me. I trust the system to do a lot of things nowadays. I think if I drop this in here and I press enter, I think it's going to look for the place. And this is where? Uh, along Legacy Badon Express, this is this location on the map. Okay, and if you see the name Ibadan Lagos Road Ibadan. That's what it called. That's what it's called. Okay, and let's see what is currently recorded here. Is this is Lagos Ojo Expressway Ibadan South? Yeah, still around the same location. All right. So that is what this is. Mind you, the system that records this information and the one that does this, I think they are two different systems. So in case you're not seeing the same information, but this is the location on the map. The naming can be something else. Right now. Billings Wave has a particular GPS location, okay, and what? It, you name it as what? Billings Way or 16 Billings Way. You are the one giving that particular location a name. So that brings us, so this is latitude, this is a what? A longitude. How do we separate this? As you, your guess is already as good as mine. If you notice, there is a comma between them. Okay, there is a comma between them. Now I'm going to what split again. I'll tell Power BI to what split it this time around. I want to split it with commands. Okay, I want to split with the comma. I click OK and Power BI does that for me. Now let's give our headers a name. So this guy we can call it last position date. Last position date. How do I do that? Non magic. Just double click on the header. Last position time. Now notice everything I'm doing. Power BI is recording a step on the right here. I keep mentioning that because you will need this at some point when you want to trace a step backwards. And the reason why Power BI is storing this is when you have new data tomorrow. So if, for instance, if I have data coming from, say, other contracts, right? And we have those TMP and all that. If you have data coming from other contracts or new months, or new teams. What I need to do is load it into that place. Power BI will run these steps on them. Okay? I can go here and I'll say GPS. I'm sure we're supposed to be rounding up now, so please pardon me. I have to round up soon. GPS latitude and GPS longitude. Close. And apply. Then it brings us, takes us through all of that. Now it gives me an error. I'm sure you know why this error is here again. We worked on that column. Let, let's see the details. We worked on this column before, the last position. Now we don't have the last position any longer. All we now have is what? Last position date, last position time, and location. What do I do? I can tell Power BI fix it, it's going to remove it. I cannot bring in my last position date and see what happens. It tries to understand it into year, quarter, month, and day. At that point, I please don't be too smart just yet. Please make this daily. Click here and change it to what? Last position date. I can move that around. I can move that around. I can move that around. So notice, October 19, 2017, one. October this, this that, 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 and so on and so forth. Do you see that? 
Uh, okay, and let me introduce one more table, one kind of table which we call what the matrix table. The matrix table, notice if I put st um, status here, notice what happens. Five like X tells me 17 trucks, three stationary. Sometimes it will give me for the same day. Look at April 16, one truck with old information, one truck stationary. Sometimes you want to see this on the same line. You want to see the different truck status. You want to bring this information by different truck status. It's not in this way. That is where the matrix table comes into play. Clicking on the matrix table, Power BI says, I can move my movement status to the columns. Let me remove this again. Movement status, I can bring it to the column. And notice what happens. April 16, I have old information one, stationary one, and two trucks in total. Okay, so today we've been able to talk about transforming particular types of data, delimiting, splitting columns, importing data via from a folder and creating reports out of this. I hope with this, you can, be, you can now go ahead, try these tricks, try these learnings on the data you have and see how far you can go with it. Please, as you, with Power BI, practice makes perfect. The day you stop using it, the day you won't lose out the cost. There's always something new on Power BI almost every day. Something new on Power BI, at least every month, I know there's something new on Power BI. So please, the learning on Power BI is always comes with practice, regular practice. You have to just keep doing it. You do it, if you make a mistake, you do it, you get something right, you mark that one as done, you go on to the next one and keep doing it. And don't be limited by what just how you want your report to look like. Try putting that on Power BI and see what happens. I imagine if I do this, I can filter and see what happens. It gives me reports for everything stationary in all my different tiles in the chat, in the table, in this other table. So questions at this point, why I round up? I'm, run, I'm done actually, questions, questions. I'd love to take questions at this point. Feedback? No, I think I'll take it back after the class, not now. Questions, 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 questions. All right, I think I'll allow you to go digest whatever you've learned today. I'm always available. I'll be available on Teams. You can chat me up privately. You can send, it, send your data to me. We can work on it together, and let's see how we can improve on our current learning for today. Uh, everyone is quiet. <laughs> so anything you have to say before I round up? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, so go practice Power BI, get better at it, and have a good um, weekend ahead of you. You Take too. Care. Stop sharing. Stop recording.